Hey everyone, Jackie here and welcome back to the Woman Kick Balls YouTube channel. And today there's gonna be a lot of different updates around soccer internationally and then of course with the NWSL. And so I normally break down these women's soccer updates into chronological order, but being that there's a few different just categories and topics, I'm gonna just break it down into starting with international updates and then of course closing things out with some NWSL updates. So let's get right into it. Also, I just want to preface this by saying that there's going to be some names I'll be mentioning that are French and uh, other sorts of things, and I'm terrible sometimes with enunciation, so my apologies. I'll also include their actual name right here for reference, but so we're going to start things off with the France Federation as Wendy Renard, who is the captain of the French women's national team, announced that she's taking a step back with the team and will not participate in the 2023 Women's World Cup which this is a big deal, and she mentioned how she's doing this for her own sanity, and so she posted about this on Twitter, and being that I don't read uh, French, I decided to use Google Translate for this, so I'll post it here on the screen as well, but basically she's saying that the Federation isn't providing uh, just the requirements needed for these athletes um, in terms of them being able to perform at their highest level. And so additionally, this also kind of sparked some other players uh, taking action as well. And so her French teammates, um, again, Marie Antoinette Catato, I think that's how you say it. Um, and this is a hard one. I'm just going to put the name right here. Uh, these three players in total are taking a step back from the team to boycott the current conditions. And they just shared that their international careers are on hold until the necessary changes are made. So lots has been happening in terms of that end. And following these announcements, the French Soccer Federation president, um, Noel Lagrite, I think that's how you say the last name, also resigned. And as far as head coach Corrine Diacker's position, she was actually supposed to resign earlier in the week, and that didn't happen. So being that Noel resigned, there's kind of been some changes there. But the decision on Corrine's position with the future of the team is actually going to be something that uh, will be now looked at by the Federation on March 9th, which is according to an article from CBS Soccer. So we should be hearing more on that soon, which will also be major news because, again, the World Cup is – not too far away. And unfortunately, this type of situation has also been a very similar issue with Canada's soccer as their players have spoken out about not being paid for the 2022 year, along with just general issues about their working conditions. And recently, their president, Nick Bontis, also resigned. And so it's a big concern that these teams are having to even deal with this issue in the first place. But then more concerning in the fact that the World Cup is just four months away. So the latest update for Canada soccer is that Christine Sinclair, Janine Becky, Sophie Smith, and Quinn will actually testify in person on March 9th. And so they will be doing that to discuss their ongoing dispute, um, their ongoing labor dispute, I should say, with their federation. And internationally, FIFA had their football awards of the year this past week. So here's a breakdown of those results. So for the best FIFA Women's Player of the Year, Alexia Putias earned the award for the second consecutive year, whereas Alex Morgan was named to the list for the fifth time, and ranking in third place was England legend Beth Mead. There's definitely some controversy over some of these results, as players from all over have their favorites and, of course, opinions on that, and so the time frame was a little different in terms of uh, when these players would be evaluated were being evaluated for their performance. And of course, you have different categories of media participation, fan participation, and coaches participation in this as well. So lots going on here, but great to see these players just get their names recognized as well. So in the NWSL offseason, the Washington Spirit announced that defender Anna Heifolchi will miss the 2023 season due to a knee injury. And that was pretty much it in terms of all the details outlined in their recent announcement. But she did just sign a two-year contract with the Spirit, so she'll still remain in D.C. as she covers, but just wishing her the best as she enters into that process. And one of the hot things that's happening right now in the NWSL is that some teams are doing rebranding on their kits, and I wanted to focus on the Orlando Pride as they did some much-needed rebranding <laughs> to their away kits. So previously, their white away kits had their jerseys, uh, numbers, and their last names in this silver lettering which I think sounded cool but in reality it was really hard to read and so they changed that to now have a black outline which is so much better like it's it looks yeah super clean so 
that's a big deal. And another change as well is that they got rid of their white shorts and replaced them with black shorts to help players feel more comfortable, especially when it's that time of the month. So they're doing some great things with their kits. And um, those are just some really positive changes for them as well. Also, this is a side note, but if you were to check out their latest video or latest Instagram reel, their marketing on announcing these changes was actually really funny. It included the players uh, reading like just like negative tweets uh, that people (laughs) said about their jerseys and kind of calling them out on their um, jersey numbers and things like that. So if you're able to check that out, you won't be disappointed. And the final update that pretty much affects several teams is that the NWSL uh, released an updated kickoff time for seven games. And so basically it affected three regular season matches and four Challenge Cup games. So now they're all moved to the evening, which in my personal opinion, I prefer evening games, especially as someone who's shooting on the sidelines I hate when the sun is out and I'm getting burnt really quick so yeah this is just a general update as well as far as the schedule so that's all I have today in terms of updates regarding women's soccer but if you enjoyed this video it'd be such a huge help if you can either give it a like or subscribe here on YouTube as well be very much appreciated Um, or you can follow along on social media channels as well through women kickballs to get daily updates so that's another option for you there and next week is one of my favorite sections as well that I'll be doing where I'm gonna be talking about my career advice and insight so if you want to pick my brain about what I do as a journalist and someone who specializes in freelance content creation Um, I feel like that word content creation gets overused, but basically I offer freelance marketing and PR services to sports organizations and athletes. And so if you want to just tune in to what I have to share more on that next week, that's what that video will be about next Friday. So again, new videos here every Friday and we'd love to have you along on this journey. So thanks for being here and hope you have a great weekend as well. So see you next week.